Hi, welcome to the service today for the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my mouth, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man among you, having a hundred sheep, if he lost one, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons that need no repentance. Or what woman? Having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus was a maddening mystery to the Pharisees. One of them had readily admitted that the signs he performed clearly testified that he was a teacher sent from God. And yet for most of them, there was always something off about Jesus. His respect for the Sabbath day seemed much too low. And then there was his habit of fraternizing with the wrong kind of people. Pharisee means separated one. As a group, these teachers of the law devoted themselves to keeping the rabbinic teachings that offered a detailed commentary of the Mosaic Law. They strove to please God by their obedience to these customs and laws. They also strove to keep themselves separate from those who were not like them in their religious commitment. They probably feared that if they related with such wayward people, that they would fall into step with their sinful ways, and so they carefully kept their distance from them. But not Jesus. One of his own disciples was a former tax collector, a member of, those, uh, of that group of public servants that were so notorious at that time for their thieving ways. When some of the Pharisees had questioned Jesus about his choice of this man, and his willingness to share meals with him and his neighbors untoward uh, people that they, as they were, he seemed undeterred by their concern. And he claimed that he had come to help unrighteous people more than righteous ones. Now his saying baffled them. How could a true servant of God care more for God's enemies than his good friends? And what of the people that the Pharisees neatly lumped into the moral category sinners? What did they think of Jesus? Well, they were drawn to him by his words and actions. He took the time to get to know them. 
He reclined with them at table in their own homes, breaking bread and conversing. Jesus taught them that their sins did not need to condemn them to hell forever because God had sent him to help them. If they believed in him, they would have his help at a place with God in his eternal kingdom. Jesus offered them hope of salvation, and many of them were happy to receive it. But this riled the Pharisees. If Jesus was right in eating and drinking with tax collectors and sinners, then they, the Pharisees, must be wrong to despise them. But that couldn't be the case. Jesus had, com had them completely flummoxed, and Pharisees did not like to be in that position. As experts in the law, they were men who usually had all the answers. They didn't like to be in the position of being the men with the questions. On one occasion, when some of them noticed that once again Jesus was enjoying table fellowship with tax collectors and sinners, they lost their temper in his company. They grumbled and complained to him about his liberal behavior. And so again, Jesus taught them. He told them parables. Parables about people who had lost something. A man who lost a sheep from its flock and a woman who lost one of her ten precious coins. He asked the grumpy Pharisees to consider what they would do if they were the man or the woman who had suffered such loss. Then he provided them with the answer. Of course, they would search for their sheep and for their coin until it was found. But he went further than that, saying that the joy of finding what they had lost would also lead them to invite their family and friends to share in their joy, most likely at a meal of celebration. Finally, he declared that these joyful celebrations of recovery of lost things accurately reflect God's joy when one sinner turns from his evil ways to believe in Jesus. Would the Pharisees understand Jesus? and turn from their self-righteous and contemptuous ways to humble themselves before him with sorrow for their sin and hunger for God's forgiveness? Do we? How do we relate to the sinners of our day? What do we think of the man who does not believe in God? Do we have any friends from among the community of lesbians and homosexuals and bisexual and trans people? Or do we wonder how we would even begin to engage in a friendship with someone like that? Have we ever spoken with someone who is homeless? Now, I, I mean more than just to say that they can't stay in the place that they've chosen to, to rest. They have to move on. Well, what obstacles keep us from searching for lost people like these and others? Fear? Disgust, anger, or something else? How about pride? It constantly blinds us to the evil in our own lives, while giving us x-ray vision that picks out the sins of other people. Pride enlists us as the legal counsel hired to justify ourselves by condemning others. We think ourselves good, while we look upon those others as bad. And so on the, that basis, we avoid them. We maintain our distance. Uh, we might not criticize those who do try to engage today's outcasts, but too often we dismiss their efforts and this self with this example of self-exempting praise. Oh, it takes a special person to work with people like that. But did the shepherd of Jesus' parable rail at his sheep for its waywardness? Did the woman throw up her hands in disgust at her coin's inability to remain on the clasp of her headdress? Instead of condemning them for being lost and excusing themselves of any responsibility, they searched for them, found them, and rejoiced when they did. Jesus calls us to admit our pride and our hypocritical drive to justify ourselves. 
to confess it as sin. Sin that makes us guilty before God and worthy of his eternal punishment, just as guilty as any of our neighbors whose sins are so obvious to us. Then he teaches us to see him as the searching shepherd or the housewife. He looks for all of us, Christian and non-Christian, straight and gay, homed and homeless, for we are all lost because of sin. But Jesus counts none of us as mere sinners to be avoided or shunned. Despite our sin, all people are precious in God's sight, and he wants us all to know that by faith. And Jesus wants us to share in his greatest joy, the repentance and salvation of sinners. Joy is ours to share with God when we confess our own sins together, that <clears throat> those we have committed against God and, and our neighbor in our thoughts, our words, and our deeds, those deeds, the things we've done, and the things that have been left undone. With his forgiving words given to a pastor like me to declare to you, God gives you the joy of your salvation again and again as he declares your sins forgiven and strengthens your faith. With the bread and wine that we eat and drink, God gives us words that promise us that Jesus' body and blood offered for us on the cross are the very food that continually nourish us now in lives of faith, love, and hope in anticipation of the heavenly feast whose joy will never end. Through his word and sacraments, Jesus invites us to share in his ongoing joy over the salvation of lost sinners, ourselves and others, so that we may join him in seeking those who remain lost among us today. This work is not easy. It requires humility, courage, patience, and compassion, and even sacrifice. But all of these are gifts that our Lord Jesus happily gives us and he can, so that he can continue his search for the lost through his children. We are the sheep that the shepherd found and the coin the woman recovered, but so are many other people who have yet to be lifted up onto the shoulders of Jesus. For them, he still searches. Do you hear him calling? Come. Seek the lost ones with me. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Having heard God's word, we now speak it back to him as our faith, as it's summarized in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ came down from heaven to seek us lost sheep and to bring us home rejoicing. Let us call upon him in thanksgiving and prayer for ourselves and for all people. O Father in heaven, we pray to you through the Son in the Holy Spirit. Grant that we may daily recognize that you provide for our every need of body and soul. We praise and bless your holy name for these gifts from above. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you call pastors and set them to the task of shepherding your people. Bless them in their work of providing your gifts to those you have gathered as they seek those who have wandered away. Grant patience and faith to congregations that wait upon you for the gift of new pastoral leadership. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, look with favor on the households of our congregation and grant that all may live in love that issues from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our King, you appoint princes and all governing authorities. Remember those you have placed in authority over us and grant that they may fulfill their responsibilities according to your word and for the good of your people. We commend <coughs> Elizabeth, the, the uh, Queen of, of England, into your care, O Lord, giving you thanks for the uh, 70 years of service um, that she granted to her subjects and pray for your blessing on Charles, the new King of the United Kingdom. Grant him wisdom as well to be a blessing in, in this world. We ask you also to turn the hearts of rulers that have led their people into war from violence and greed to seek peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you heal and deliver us. Hear our cries for all who are in need of strength and rescue them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You bring up the souls of your people from Sheol, receive our thanks that you restore to life your people who go down to the pit and preserve us in faith until we sing your praises with them in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, all things are yours, and you have promised to well supply us with all that we need. Give us courage and faith that we may give a confident amen to these prayers, certainly that you will give us all that is good and beneficial for our salvation and preserve us from all things harmful for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom and with whom and in whom be all honor and glory, both now and forever. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. May God strengthen you in the week to come as you continue to reflect on his good words of life for you in Jesus Christ. Receive now his blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Bye for now.